see if we can find the source of the squeak. So the first thing you want to look at is the drive belt. Look for cracks, deterioration. This one looks to be in really good shape. I replaced it maybe a year ago, so I don't think that is the source of the squeak. But the next thing we can do, we can start the vehicle and use a very long screwdriver. Now, if you have a mechanic stethoscope, that will be even a little bit easier, but this does work. So as the vehicle is running, right here we have the tensioner. This fastener does not spin, it's stationary. So I can place the tip of the screwdriver against the fastener and listen to it. Compare that with this guy in the bottom. This is the idler and listen to it. Now I believe I found the source. Right here is the tensioner. I will try to get this on camera. I'm not sure if the microphone will pick it up. And the tensioner sounds really, really rough. And the idler sounds nice and smooth. So I bet that this tensioner bearing needs to be replaced. It's really scratchy comparing that to the idler. So I believe that is the culprit. Now if you're not sure, the next step is removing the drive belt and starting the vehicle. So I have a belt removal tool and as always I will list all of the tools in the description box below. Now if you're not familiar with this type of tool, it makes removing the belt really easy. 3H drive adapter, in my case it's a 14 mil socket. Then placing the tool directly on the tensioner. Now before I remove the belt, I've giving myself a little diagram showing how the belt routes. So take some pictures, do a diagram, and then you simply place pressure. You see how the tensioner moves? And that's how you remove the belt. Now the reason why we can start the vehicle once we remove the drive belt is because then we can verify that we have no issues within the timing belt. And I'll explain in a moment. Let me just remove this. Okay. So now we're going to start the vehicle and verify there are no sounds. Now again, the reason why you want to do this is because if there's an issue within the timing belt assembly, you have bearings and tensioners and so forth, maybe one of those bearings or tensioners starting to go. And if you remove the belt and still hear that noise, then you've isolated where the problem is. In my case, I would want to do this when the engine is cold because that's when I'm hearing the squeaking noise. But I'm fairly certain the tensioner is the issue because I recently replaced the timing belt along with the bearings and the tensioner. And when I spin, hand spin the tensioner, I can feel and hear that it's a little bit rough and squeaky. So certainly it's a good time to replace it. Now, if your vehicle has a side mounted or transverse mounted engine, getting access to everything could be a little bit daunting, but the easiest way to replace this is by lifting up the vehicle and removing the front wheel. Now on a day like today, when it's over 90 degrees outside, wearing gloves can actually slow you down, at least for me. I don't like the sticking and it's just very uncomfortable. So hand lotion could be your best friend. The whole point with this really is that it fills in all of the cracks so when you're ready to wash your hands afterwards, all of the grease comes off a lot easier. And then we have a small plastic piece. We can simply remove these. You find this a lot on modern vehicles. They're just held in by these plastic tabs. Now you can buy a tool that is made specifically to remove these, but a small flathead also works. Okay, we can move this out of the way. Now something that I find is really helpful is looking at the new part. Now if you don't have the part yet, you can simply just do a web search. But the nice thing about this is, hold on. Okay, now I know where the fasteners live. So I have one on the bottom and one right here that I need to remove. And since I'm doing this job, I'm also replacing the drive belt. Now because the fastener is pretty deep in the engine bay, let's first set up our socket and ratchet. And then I'm using a half inch drive extension and a large socket to fit over the handle of the ratchet. Now I have a really, really long handle to break this loose. 
Okay, makes it really easy. So this is where it comes into play removing that front wheel. So right there is our tensioner. So I also have this fastener, which is a 12. Okay. And then just compare your old part with the new part. Make sure everything lines up. So at this point, I'm just reinstalling everything and we'll start the vehicle.